Okay, so what we're doing, uh, we basically are going around the cursed island of Dubrovnik called Lokrum, which has a nice story uh, dating from um, not so long time ago, actually, uh, for creation measures, but it, uh, in 18th century there is um, some story about the curse. Uh, the monks who lived in this monastery of St. Mary, which were Benedictines, um, went one night out of this monastery and uh, basically by the stories they turned up their can candles upside down and make a few circles around the monastery cursing everything on the island. So uh, it's still a completely uninhabited island. Welcome to the Amid Life Traveler podcast where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, hello, and thanks for listening to the Midlife Traveler. I am Laura, and today I am taking you to Dubrovnik, Croatia, where you get to hear from local Ivan about sea kayaking outside Old Town Dubrovnik and around Lokrum Island, the famous cursed island. So Ivan, the local you're going to meet, he works for a company called uh, Skybar, and they are one of the companies that run sea kayaking tours in Dubrovnik. And the reason why I wanted to do a tour with Skybar is because they are one of the few companies that run out of the very historic and scenic location called Pile Harbor, which is a little bay right next to Old Town Dubrovnik, right on the edge of the city walls. And this bay is gorgeous. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. And it's a filming location for Game of Thrones. It's actually where the Oh my gosh, what is it? The Battle of Blackwater Bay. It's where uh, Maricela got on the boat to go off to, what, Dorne? Is that where she went? And and some other cool Game of Thrones locations. So to be able to do a kayaking tour that started and stopped around this historic location is something that I really wanted to try when I was in Croatia. So... What you are going to hear is a conversation with Ivan talking about the tour and about some of his thoughts about uh, visiting Dubrovnik in Croatia. And this was a conversation that happened before I went on the tour. So after you hear from Ivan, um, then I'll come back on and tell you some of my opinions and my experiences of the tour itself. And also, we've already written a review of this sea kayaking tour on our website at midlifetraveler.com. So if you visit there, you can go ahead and just get links to this tour company, to other sea kayaking tours in Dubrovnik, and you can also see some photos and video of the location, which was pretty cool. So with that, here's Ivan telling you about sea kayaking in Dubrovnik. Hey, this is Laura with the Midlife Traveler podcast, and we are in the middle of Croatia in Dubrovnik. Actually, we're at the bottom of Croatia, and I'm here at the Sky Bar with Ivan. He is going to tell us about a kayaking tour. I think we're going to do the sunset one, so tell us all about it. So, the sunset tour is uh, one of the most popular tours in Dubrovnik, uh, with kayaking, of course, and it's a tour that lasts uh, two and a half hours. Uh, we created this tour uh, seven years ago. Uh, some say even uh, l l longer than that, and the whole tour is done to have some physical activity and the history in the same time. Uh, we created the, the, this tour mostly because of Australians and the people from UK. But Wait a minute, you created this tour mostly because of Australians yeah, and people from the UK? Yeah, exactly. There was a lot of questions to have some more exciting thing to do, just uh, instead of walking tour to have something more, uh, I would say, um, to, to see and to do more than just to walk. Okay, fair. Okay, so what we're doing, uh, we basically are going around the cursed island of Dubrovnik called Lokrum, which has a nice story uh, dating from um, not so long time ago, actually, uh, for creation measures, but it, uh, in 18th century there is um, some story about the curse. Uh, the monks who lived in this monastery of St. Mary, which were Benedictines, um, went one night out of this monastery and uh, basically by the stories they turned up their can candles upside down and make a few circles around the monastery cursing everything on the island. So uh, it's still a completely uninhabited island. Uh, there is no living soul on it, and there is, was uh, uh, lots of associations with a lot of freaky accidents on it, uh, like a uh, burnt uh, fire department uh, house and uh, some other stories which are basically sp in, in a category of spooky stories. 
So we just came from Lokrum Island. We took a ferry out there. Yeah. I can tell you it's full of life with tourists yes. and peacocks. Yes. And there are fire hydrants like yes. all around. Yes. Yes. And that's the same island that is cursed. Uh, that, that curse is uh, you can um, think about it whatever you want, but there is a national uh, actually believe that this is a cursed spot. Uh, the story says if you fall asleep on the island that you will die. But uh, oh. no one actually oh. wants to test that. And uh, it's really easy to avoid the curse, just stay up and don't go to sleep on the island or sunbeat. Um, uh, so basically what we're doing, uh, we, we uh, give you these double-seated kayaks. We have a single kayak in front of us, single kayak in back, in the rear. And uh, the tour guides are uh, in charge of uh, the group. So basically they are using that single kayaks. Uh, and the whole tour uh, will start from a small bay which is just close to the wall. Uh, we cross the channel and the uh, first stop is already close to the island where you stop for a short while and you can take pictures uh, because we provide a small barrel so we can, uh, which you can use and after that we are going to that uh, wait small barrels what's that so that means we can put our gear inside yes. that so uh, i can take it out and take a picture every now and yes. then exactly so you can put your camera inside you can put your wallet and valuables inside and we, if you have more stuff like you do you can leave it on the beach where we have a special box where you can just Coop it, uh, put it inside and we will uh, guard it with our lives. <laughs> so uh, afterwards, uh, we are crossing here through the narrow passage. We have a nudist beach, so try not to peek here. Uh, and we are going inside the cave. So the first cave which we are entering is going inside with, the ki with kayaks. Oh, that looks cool. Uh, it's not very deep. It's 50 meters deep. It has really interesting approach, like a snake. And the best feature about it, it uh, besides... Uh, it's cool. It's really cool. <laughs> it's, uh, so inside, inside you can cool down a bit from the um, atmosphere area and from all the sun we have here and uh, relax a bit. So after five minute break, we are crossing channel and we have another cave. Well, we are rich with the caves. This one has a beach inside. Nice. And if you like cliff jumping, you can do it here. And that's the Bettina cave? Yes, Bettina cave. Bettina cave it has something like a pebble beach. Uh, there is no sea urchin, so you are not cut your feet or step yourself. And uh, if you like cliff jumping, uh, you can jump from high positions as far as 14 meters. Cool. Uh, if you get scared, don't worry. The service of pushing people down is uh, paid already. <laughs> so uh, we also provide you snorkeling equipment. If you like to do snorkeling, you can do it here. Don't expect to see much fish because fish and, and tourists doesn't go well together. But you can probably see some other people doing snorkeling as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, after that short break here, well, we also provide you sandwiches, which are inside the price. We are doing panoramic view of the coast. So uh, we'll have a few nice stops. One stop is close to the Villa Sheherezada, which is one of the most famous villas here. It has a lot of, uh, it actually hosted a lot of uh, famous people. Uh, some story says that uh, even a uh, long time ago when Brad and Angelina were together, they, they, stood, they stayed here. And uh, it's really expensive to, to take one night there. Uh, Afterwards, we will stop here in front of the old port, uh, by far the most beautiful part of the tour because you basically have your Dubrovnik in, on your palm. You can see everything and you're not in the big crowds. At the end of the tour, we are, uh, have a small race with the boats. It's still active port. You should, you look fit, you should survive that part. Uh, we are going along the walls uh, uh, back to the port. So total two and a half hours, seven kilometers. I think you should do it easily. And uh, the best feature about that is you're avoiding all the crowds on, in the old town and uh, you're doing something you know, historical and, and, and entertaining in the same time. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Um, may I ask how many kayaks you have? Because it seems like we see packs of 10 okay, or 20 so like uh, every... Well, let's clear out. There is lots of companies as well. So oh, it's, okay. uh, there is no, uh, only one company. So at, the, at this moment, we have seven companies uh, operating on this uh, really narrow space. So we have a limit, and, we, and it's uh, prescribed by the law that we have a uh, limited amount of kayaks. Okay. So if someone wanted to find this kayaking company and take kayak from the same place, where are we? Describe where we are and how to get here. Uh, well, we are at um, Sky Bar. Uh, that's basically one of the ex-Fuego um, uh, Club. It was a long time ago a Latin club. Today it's known as the nightclub Sky Bar. And it's in the middle of the Pillar Square. It's basically you cannot miss us. Where you see a lot of buses stopping and starting, you're on the, this location. If you just ask anyone from the locals about Sky Bar, you'll know where we are. Fantastic. May I ask you something else? Yes. What's the best thing about Dubrovnik? Uh, it's, there is a lot of bests and a lot of minuses as well. So the best part of Dubrovnik is its beauty. You know, it has a really ancient uh, beauty, and uh, wherever you go, you'll where whatever you touch you'll find some history and even if you scratch something you'll get history as well 
And um, this Dubrovnik was actually one of the oldest democracies, so actually republics in the world. And uh, if I say so, it uh, as well recognized the United States as a sovereign state, one of the first, and without angering England. So basically, uh, this is one of the, you would like to say that, uh, uh, talk about uh, democracy and, and uh, freedom and everything. Well, this city has a freedom written on its flag. And That's fantastic. I had no idea. Yes, libertas. It actually means freedom in Latin. Okay, so that's the end of our conversation that happened before I took the tour. Uh, after I took the tour, um, I'll just give it to you straight. It was actually one of my favorite, absolute favorite things that I did while in Dubrovnik. Taking that kayak tour and walking the old city walls were my two favorites to do in Dubrovnik. But if you go to our website, you'll actually see the map of the tour route. And one of the things that was pretty interesting is even though there are massive groups. I mean, there's probably 10 groups of kayaks on the water at any given time. When you're in the kayak, it, it doesn't feel like you're doing touristy stuff. You know, you don't feel like you're in a pack of tourists because you're on the water, you're just paddling and you're, the boat is rocking and you're hearing the waves and you're getting slightly wet and it's just, you know, the sea air and it just feels really, uh, scenic and back to nature and just feels good to be out there on the water and, and the views to be floating you know that low at sea level looking up at the massive huge old town of old city Dubrovnik and which is the site the filming site for King's Landing and Game of Thrones it's just very very cool and after you get out at the beginning and for like after the first I don't know 15-20 minutes of paddling the group gets together and we were given a choice they basically said we can break into two here we have two guides so one group can go straight the short route to Bettina Cave which is where there's snorkeling and swimming or there's a longer advanced route which goes all the way around Lokrum Island Lokrum is the cursed island that they have right off of Dubrovnik and if we go around Lokrum Island we will be seeing inside one of the caves we're going into fisherman's cave pigeon's cave and then we go around the island and also happen to pass a nude beach on the way over to Bettina cave and so we chose the advanced long route around Lokram island and to be honest i'm so glad we did because the paddling was great it was very scenic going inside that cave on the island was just uh, just kind of a surreal serene feeling and the light it was just absolutely beautiful loved it but then getting to Bettina cave to be honest I could have skipped that whole part it was so crowded with tourists and people splashing and it was really not anything remotely related to the peaceful being on the water or paddling with a kayak it was basically we beached up with about I don't know there must have been 50 60 70 kayaks in this really small cave people like I were eating our sandwiches that they gave us and People were jumping off rocks and swimming, and it was just super crazy packed and crowded with tourists. So it was kind of, I guess, nice to stop there, but I would have been super disappointed if I had taken the short route and just went to the cave and instead so happy to take the long route and go around Lokram Island because it was absolutely worth it. One of the coolest parts about the tour was just the, the return. We chose the sunset tour. So as we're paddling back towards Old Town King's Landing, it, it, the sun was setting behind it, and it just felt really, really like I, like I was inside a brochure. I was like inside a postcard. It was just this almost out-of-body experience. Like I can't believe I'm sitting here seeing this, experiencing this. This is real. Like this isn't something I'm watching on TV. It just was this great great thing to add to our vacation experience so anyways I can't speak highly enough about going kayaking if you choose to go to Dubrovnik Croatia on vacation and if you're interested in checking out our recommendations and some options on sea kayaking tours to try please go to our website at midlifetraveler.com that's it I hope you enjoyed Croatia and kayaking and safe travels wherever you may roam <laughs>